bit of a different review today, if, if I can call it that. I've been using the Sigma since 2017 on the Olympus CM5, and I'm just going to show you how it's been, since there isn't much info around. I thought it was worth it to put together what I gathered about it so far, because now I'm upgrading to a Nikon 300. I got it because I betted on it being one of the better options between the cheaper F4 Teles. Being the hobo photographer that I am, I got it for $260 and paired it with my second hand M5. That makes for a stabilized birding setup for under $500. Ship stabilized bodies where micro four thirds is untouchable in my opinion, not because of some supposed size or weight advantage. The image quality of this setup is hard to describe. Um, to put it short, I think this lens is inconsistent. I'm not gonna waste time showing you short tests because it'll be the same as always. Uh, susceptible wide open, sharper stuff down, yada yada. Instead I'm just showing me real world photos taken through the years with it and highlighting the good and bad about them. But first let me show you how it looks and handles on the EM5. It's from the generation of Sigma from the 90s that had that rubber texture called Zane on some parts. It has a built-in hood, which I like, and because of that rubber texture, it's pretty firm to extend and retract it. It stays very locked in place unless you give it a little yank. This version is for Nikon. It has the aperture ring that lets me switch aperture even using a dumb adapter. And it's why I chose it. It's lighter than the Canon version because the Canon has an autofocus motor inside. This one still uses the Nikon Screwdriver AF. If you want to try it with autofocus using a smart adapter, you're gonna have to choose the Canon mount. Despite being a full frame lens, it's actually a bit lighter and smaller than the Olympus on 300 f4. Uh, that is negated when you factor the length of the adapter in. Compared to the Olympus, it also has a shorter minimum working distance. Uh, that allows for a bit more magnification. With the camera at my waist height, I can focus on my feet. And the image quality appears to be much better in close-ups than distant stuff. It's internal focusing, and um, now, the focus ring is my favorite part about the ergonomics. It's big and ultra smooth. You don't need to break a friction to make it start moving. It's hard to convey this in video, but I try to show you how little force you need to move it. The M5 has a small viewfinder and it doesn't have focus picking, but a small workaround for easier focusing is just setting the button closest to the shutter as a focus check. Now about the image quality. It can be sharp, but the transition to autofocus areas looks super weird most of the time. It's more common in high contrast lighting. It's like the transition areas get glowy. It's a kind of blur that looks more like motion blur. It sucks because sometimes most of the image is in that transition area between focus and autofocus. See the double edge it creates uh, on the leaves outline? It reminds me of motion blur and I really don't like that look. Same thing here, compare the leaves that are in focus against the ones that are slightly out of focus. There's a very noticeable ghosting. Again, the bird head is perfectly sharp, but everything else uh, has a shaky look. This double line, double outline artifacts look so distracting for me. 
As you see again, this hawk head looks perfectly sharp, I caught it in the middle of blink, but the branch already looks shaky instead of the normal lens blur we expect to see. In video, those artifacts look harder to notice, at least in 1080p. The M5 doesn't have 4K. In even lighting, it generally looks great. This seem to be some of the only photos of a female Citalopus spelunki. Chromatic aberration generally isn't a problem, it's hard to notice. I guess I only noticed when I had have to recover too much highlights against the bright skies. But otherwise, I think it, it does much better than other lenses from the same era. Sometimes, even in complicated lighting and background, it will look good. That's why I say it's inconsistent. And actually, I'm even having second thoughts about leaving it for the Nikon while I select these photos. I accidentally shot it a whole day with a 1.4 Olympus teleconverter that I forgot was on. And I definitely do not recommend it with a teleconverter, it looks totally blurry wide open. These planes where I shot stopped down, I don't remember if at 5.6 or f8. In the end, it's an interesting lens. It's not for everyone, it's, uh, it's inconsistent, but it's also a bar game. Even a used Olympus 300 usually go for over 2000 This one is like a tenth of the price. Now I'm substituting it for a Nikon 300 F4 that I got for about the same price with broken autofocus. So far, I just saw that the image quality is better, since on par with my Canon 70 to 300 but I still like the ergonomics of the Sigma more. The Sigma's focus ring is still much better to use. I probably make a video about the Nikon tool when I get more experienced with it. So do subscribe if you wanna be notified about that when it happens. Thank you for watching. And as always, if you wanna check out more of my photos or want to get some prints and support what I do, I will leave links in the description.